Okay, we're going to start with lesson 3-3, all things being equal. This um, section is about solving equations. So we're going to, this is on page 311, and we're going to start right here with the classwork. So we're considering four statements. New York City is the capital of Guatemala. Over a million distinct species of animals have been cataloged and named. 8 equals 5, and 13 minus 6. 10 equals 3. So we're looking at those statements and deciding are they true or false? Well, the first one and the third one are false, and the second and the fourth one are true. As you probably noticed, the connection between the last two statements is that each of the state that, sorry, is that each states that these two things are equal, right? 13 minus 10 does equal 3. So we can take that and use it for our equation ideas, and these are the key things that we want to remember. An equation is simply a statement that um, where two quantities are equal. So we're going to have an equal sign in between two separate quantities. And like the verbal statements, equations can either be true or false. And we're going to evaluate that and keep that in mind as we go through this section. So the statement below for question one contains a variable quantity. Is it always true or always false? And then we're going to explain that. And what it says is, the number of hours that you spend on homework this week is 14. So the question is, is that true or false? And if we we're in a class setting, you would probably say it's true sometimes, but not all the time, right? So true sometimes, but not always. Sometimes you might spend 14 hours a week on homework, and sometimes you might not. An equation is written to represent a statement like this called a conditional equation, and is the type that we use most commonly in areas of math for algebra. So we're using this to kind of discuss our algebraic concepts. And one of those things that we've discussed is a variable. So we're going to talk about the variable h. We're going to use the letter h to represent as a variable to represent the number of hours that we spend on homework. And we can write out this statement up here from question one as h equals 14. In this case, it should be pretty clear that h is 14 and that is true. Or if h is not 14, then it would be false. So 14 is the only number we can plug in for h that makes it true. So we see some more definitions here on page 312 that says, um, a number that makes each equation a true statement when substituted in for the variable is called a solution. So if we plug in 14 for h, then it is the solution. The set of all numbers that make the equation true is called the solution of an equation. So sometimes we might have more than one number that can be plugged in. Um, that won't be all the time for us, but it will, it will be sometimes in algebra you can have more than one answer, more than one solution. When an equation looks like h equals 14, the solution is pretty clear. The only number we can plug in is 14. That's why it's obvious. But when an equation looks like negative 12y plus 17 equals 2y minus 11, it's not so clear what the solution is. So we have to come up with a systematic way of turning an equation whose solution isn't obvious into one that's obvious. So we have some pro a process that we're going to go through. Um, and when we change the form of an equation in an attempt to find the solution, Anything that we do should not affect whether it was originally true or false. So we're going to start with question two here, where it says the equation 5 equals 5 is obviously true. And when the, if, while the equation 5 equals 10 is obviously false. So let's try multiplying both sides of each equation by 2. So what does that look like? That looks like if we, oh, sorry, let me bring this down here. So, hopefully I can do this here, 5 equals 5 is our true statement. If I multiply both sides by 2, so I'm going to put a 2 on this side and multiply by a 2 on this side, then we get that 10 equals 10. And that's still true. So these are both true. We're going to do it for the second equation, which was obviously false. 5 equals 10, that's a false statement. And if I multiply both sides by 2 here, we'll see that 10 equals 20 is still false. 
So we still have a false statement for that. So that's the conclusion. We should have learned that multiplying both sides of our equation by the same number doesn't change whether the statement, if it was originally true, it doesn't change what you do to both when you do it to both sides, that it still ends up being true. Same thing with the false statement. When we originally start with a false statement and we do the same thing to both sides by multiplying, it does not change the, the fact that it's false. So, number three, a little tricky here. Um, we know that one foot equals 12 inches is a true statement. So is it true that three feet equals 36 inches? That is also true. And why is it true? It's true because, what do you see? We can multiply both sides. If I have one foot and I equals 12 inches, and I multiply both sides by three, that's a three there, sorry, my friends, multiply a three there, I see that I get three feet equals 36 inches. So that's why we can multiply both sides by a factor of three and get the results to be the same. We also know that one mile equals 5,280 feet, that's true. While the equation one yard equals one meter is false. If we multiply both sides of the equation by zero, what happens? So when we multiply both sides of the equation by zero, it's a bad idea and we're gonna find out why. Because if I have one mile equals 5,280 feet, and I multiply this side by zero and this side by zero, I'll get that zero equals zero. That's still true. So it started out true, ended up true. But if I do the same thing with the one yard equals one meter, which is a false statement, and I multiply by zero on both sides, I'll get zero equals zero, which is now went from false to true. So that's a bad idea to multiply by zero. So we're gonna fill that blank in for number five that when we multiply both sides by, I'm gonna to try to write multiply very small here, when we multiply both sides of an equation by the same number or expression as long as it's not zero, that is something that is a tool we can use to solve equations. So if I multiply here to solve this, I have d over 360 equals 0.35, and we've seen something like this before. If I multiply both sides by 360, I'll get that um, the 360s will cancel on this side and I'll be left with D equals uh, 126. That's actually something we learned from our pie charts, but that'll come into play later. Um, we can tell that the solution here, d over 360 equals uh, 0.35, d is the only, 126 is the only number that will go in because we only got one answer for, uh, for the solution. So we only have one answer. It's the only solution um, because we did a step that did not change the number of solutions um, and that... Um, our original, it's the only number that will go into our original equation to make it true. So 126 is the only solution, meaning whatever we, any other value we would put into the original equation would not make the statement true on both sides. We're gonna jump to number seven. We did know that the equation one minute equals 60 seconds is true, so is, is it also true that half a minute equals 30 seconds? What did we do to both sides to get that to be equivalent? You should see that one minute equals 60 seconds is true, and then half a minute is 30 seconds. That is also true um, because what did we do? We divided both sides by two. So it's true because we divided by two on both sides. So we're gonna fill in the blank in the purple box here. That's something 
that we can also do to both sides, just like when we were multiplying the same number uh, on both sides of the equations to keep the value, the statement true, we can divide by the same thing on both sides. Again, as long as it's not zero um, to get uh, to solve an equation as one of our solving tools. So this, this little tiny little line here should say divide. So we're going to see if that works. Um, to solve this equation, 5x equals 60, what do we use to solve that? We're going to divide both sides by 5. And we'll see that x, the 5s will cancel, because 5 over 5 is 1, leaves us with just x on the left side. 60 divided by 5 is 12. Let's go back real quickly to um, the equation that we had uh, with the d over 60, but instead of setting it equal to 0.35, it looks like we're going to have a ratio um, of 35 over 100. And when we have two ratios, d over 360 and 35 over 100 set equal to each other, we call that a proportion. The equation that we solved in question 5 was a proportion that I mentioned before, except it was written as a decimal. So here we have the d over 360 equals 35 over 100. And to solve this, we're going to use a procedure called cross multiplication, which you may have heard of. And it's used often to solve proportions. So we're going to multiply from, I like to multiply from the bottom up on both sides, just so I'm going up from the bottom on both sides. Everyone does it a little bit different, but the idea is we cross over the equal sign. In essence, we're multiplying both sides by 100. To eliminate the 100 on the right side and then also multiplying both sides by 360 which I'm gonna have a hard time squeezing in here probably should do that up below to eliminate the 360 on the um, on the on the left side denominator actually in this space here I'm gonna do that um, to show that multiplying both sides by the same number which is going to be 100 and then also by 360 so a product of 100 and 360 together will reduce our fraction. So let's let's do that. We're going to rewrite out the original proportion, which is d over 360 equals 35 over 100. We'll multiply both sides by 100, which will eliminate it on the right side and leave us with 100d on the left side. And then we're going to multiply both sides by 360 on both sides, which will eliminate the 360 in the denominator on the left. Oops, sorry, that undo that. Didn't mean to cross out the 360 there. I'll rewrite it if I can. Thank you. It'll go away on the left. I said the left, but I wrote the right. So now we have 100 d, that's over here, and th 35 times 360, 35 times 360, and then we're going to continue um, to solve, to, um, to, I guess we're going to, we're going to continue to solve that, I don't think it says that directly, but I think it's nice to see, um, that we would have uh, 12,600 over here, and this equals 100d, and so we can divide by 100 on both sides. Again, that's the division tool, and that's going to give us our 126 that we got earlier from question 5. Now we're going to cross multiply and solve for number 10, doing the same thing here. So we're going to multiply both sides by 360, or not 360, 36. <laughs> Too much going on there. Um, multiply both sides by 36 to get rid of it on the right side. And then multiply both sides by 12 to get rid of it on the left side. And so we'll have 36x equals 15 times 12 which is 180, so we'll have, ooh, excuse me here, we'll have 36x equals 180, 
and then divide both sides by 36, and we'll get that x, let me scroll down just a smidge, x equals 5. So that, that's how we use the tool to cross multiply to solve there, and you'll be doing that as you practice that in Connect Math and in the group work.